communication and homeostasis basics. Responding to their environment helps organisms survive. 1. Animals increase their chances of survival by responding to changes in their external environment for example, avoiding harmful environments, too hot slash cold places. 2. And respond to changes in their internal environment to make sure that conditions are always optimal for their metabolism or the chemical reactions that go on inside them. 3. Plants increase their chances of survival by responding to changes in their environment. 4. Any change in the internal or external environment is called a stimulus. Receptors detect stimuli and effectors produce a response. 1. Receptors detect stimuli. 2. Receptors are specific, they only detect one particular stimulus, for example, light, pressure or glucose concentration. 3. There are many different types of receptor that each detect a different type of stimulus. 4. Some receptors are cells, for example, photoreceptors are receptor cells that connect to the nervous system, some are proteins on cell surface membranes. For example, glucose receptors are proteins found in the cell's membranes of some pancreatic cells. 5. Effectors are cells that bring about a response to a stimulus to produce an effect. Effectors include muscle cells and cells found in glands, for example, pancreas. Receptors communicate with effectors via hormones and nerves. 1. Receptors communicate with effectors via the nervous system or the hormonal system or sometimes both. 2. Nervous and hormonal communications are both examples of cell signaling, where cells communicate with each other. Negative feedback is a process in which any change in a parameter brings about the reversal of that change so the parameter is kept fairly constant. Positive feedback is a process in which any change in a parameter brings about an increase in that change. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment despite external changes. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. 1. Changes in your external environment can affect your internal environment, the blood and tissue fluid that surrounds your cells. 2. Homeostasis involves control systems that keep your internal environment roughly constant, within certain limits. 3. Keeping your internal environment constant is vital for cells to function normally and to stop them being damaged. 4. It's particularly important to maintain the right core body temperature. This is because temperature affects enzyme activity, and enzymes control the rate of metabolic reactions. If body temperature is if body temperature is too high, for example, 40 degrees C, enzymes may become denatured. The enzymes molecules vibrate too much, which breaks the hydrogen bonds that hold them in their 3D shape. The shape of the enzyme's active site has changed and it no longer works as a catalyst. This means metabolic reactions are less efficient. If body temperature is too low, enzyme activity is reduced, slowing the rate of metabolic reactions. The highest rate of enzyme activity happens at their optimum temperature, about 37 degrees C in humans. 5. It's also important to maintain the right concentration of glucose in the blood, so there's always enough available for respiration. Homeostatic systems detect a change and respond by negative feedback. 1. Homeostatic systems involve receptors, a communication system and effectors. 2. Receptors detect when a level is too high or too low, and the information is communicated via the nervous system or the normal system to effectors. 3. The effectors respond to counteract the change, bringing the level back to normal. 4. The mechanism that restores the level to normal is called a negative feedback mechanism. 5. Negative feedback keeps things around the normal level, for example, body temperature is usually kept within 0.5 degrees C above or below 37 degrees C. 
6. Negative feedback only works within certain limits though, if the change is too big then the effectors may not be able to counteract it. For example, a huge drop in body temperature caused by prolonged exposure to cold weather may be too large to counteract. Positive feedback mechanisms amplify a change from the normal level. 1. Some changes trigger a positive feedback mechanism, which amplifies the change. 2. The effectors respond to further increase the level away from the normal level. 3. Positive feedback is useful to rapidly activate something, for example, a blood clot after an injury. Platelets become activated and release a chemical. This triggers more platelets to be activated, and so on. Platelets very quickly form a blood clot at the injury site. The process ends with negative feedback, when the body detects the blood clot has been formed. 4. Positive feedback isn't involved in homeostasis because it doesn't keep your internal environment constant.